Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 47th episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it had, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. While my last video was technically still the East Coast, that album came out in New Jersey, and its sound wasn't exactly prototypical 90s New York boom bap. That isn't a bad thing at all, it just means I can do another New York classic before heading back over to other areas. However, when it comes to big pun, the word classic is a vast understatement. A more fitting and accurate description would be one of the most technically proficient and effortless MCs to ever grace the mic. When it comes to rhyme schemes, flow, delivery, and most of all breath control, Many hip-hop fans and legends alike cite the Big Punisher as the very best there is. The reason you'll sometimes see this monster of an MC left off of all-time rapper lists is because of how short his discography is due to his tragic passing. His second and final album, Yeah Baby, saw Pun suffering with his health issues throughout the recording process, with it ultimately being released just two months after his death. While his short-lived career ultimately made him one of hip-hop's biggest what-ifs, the talent he did get to showcase on his debut, Capital Punishment, solidified him as an all-time great. Initially, Pun was scouted by Fat Joe, a key member of the supergroup DITC or the Diggin' in the Crates crew, alongside Big L, Buckwild, OC, Lord Finesse, Diamond D, as well as Showbiz and AG. Joe would recruit Pun to be a member of another crew of his though, this being Terror Squad, which went through multiple lineups and roster changes after the unfortunate death of its most valued member. They still had success and even massive hits, but nobody can argue that Big Pun's passing left Terror Squad with an understandably hard to fill hole. One thing I personally really admire about Pun is how he's one of the rappers who truly pushes the boundaries of what's possible in the genre. When you're coming up with schemes and playing them out in your head, sometimes you can trick yourself since mouthing out a verse is a lot easier than actually laying the vocals down or doing it live. You can end up fitting too many words into one line, and only truly gifted and seasoned pros can get through these types of verses without choking or missing a beat, not to mention the fact you need to have personality and decide where to use emphasis. As a result, a lot of rappers just record one line at a time if they have a really difficult technical run, and then they have it spliced together later to make it appear seamless. You can't really accuse Pun of that, because if you watch the famous old cipher he's in, with most death, DMX, and other legends. He spits one of his densest verses off Capital Punishment in one take with ease. He'll stretch the limits of your imagination by doing the type of verse structure most MCs can't or won't operate with, either because they don't have the ability or they don't know how to make it sound natural and not corny. Big Pun to me has always come across like he approaches every verse as if it was going to be his last. Case in point being the fact he's practically never been washed on a track by another rapper. As in I've never heard him on a song with a different MC where the other MC clearly bested him. The closest you'll find are songs where the best verse is debatable. Like with Black Thought of the Roots with his killer feature on here. Though it does seem like most people kind of lean towards pun on that one. That song is titled Super Lyrical, and it was actually the first big pun song I ever heard way back in middle school before I'd really begun my hip-hop journey. I'd heard Eminem at that point, even Busta Rhymes on Look At Me Now, but the relentless way that pun would devour his verses was unlike anything I'd really been subject to at the time. However, speaking of Busta Rhymes, he actually is one of the features that appears on here alongside Black Thought. Another feature on here is actually from the last album I covered, which as usual was a total coincidence, that being Wyclef from the Fugees. That's just a sliver of the artists who contribute to this thing though. We also have Joe, Miss Jones, Fat Joe, Triple Sace, Armageddon, Cuban Link, Prospect, Funk Flex, Wu-Tang's Inspected Deck, Prodigy of Mob Deep, Noriega or Nori from CNN, as well as Dead Prez, who also handled the instrumental for the track they appeared on. However, Pun had no issue carrying a solo project on his own. You can tell by the extensive tracklist he knew any given rapper only has one shot at a debut. 
especially back then, if you were putting aside all this time, money, and effort to record a debut album as a solo artist, you probably wouldn't be able to afford a second go if it wasn't a success. Arguably the most famous moment or moments from this album come in the form of Pun's first two verses on the game-changing track Twins. Here he goes back and forth with Fat Joe, who more than holds his own, I actually think it's one of his best verses to date. However, it's the Punisher who truly steals the show, and while it's a masterclass in flow and delivery front to back, I'm only gonna pull a couple of my favorite bars for the sake of time. Honestly, with Pun, you get so much content stuffed into each line that shouldn't be too much of an issue. The first line I want to shout out is easily the most well-known and highly quoted, which of course is dead in the middle of Little Italy, little did we know that we riddled some middlemen who didn't do diddly. But I actually also love the bars Fat Joe comes in with right after this, spitting, It'll be a cold day in hell the day I take an L. Make no mistake for real, I wouldn't hesitate to kill. I'm still the fat one that you love to hate. Catch you at your mother's wake. Smack you, then I whack you with my snub tray eight. But of course, Pun wasn't going to let anyone outshine him for a second, so he comes right back in with arguably my favorite section of lines in the whole song. These being, I rub your face off the earth and curse your family's children like Amityville. I drill the nerves in your cavities filling, insanity's building, a pavilion in my civilian. The canon be the anarchy that humanity's dealing. A villain without remorse who's willing to out your boss forever and take all the cheddar like child support. I could quote classic lines all day, but for this one, my honorable mentions would have to be the title track, Super Lyrical, Still Not a Player, The Dream Shatterer, Glamour Life, Boomerang, You Came Up, Fast Money, and Parental Discretion. This leaves my three absolute favorites as Twins, Beware, and Tre Leche or the Triboro Trilogy. I also obviously didn't name any skits in there because I pretty much never do, but that isn't me saying I don't enjoy them or think they add to the album, and Capital Punishment is a perfect example of how you can do skits the right way. But just like with most classics, it takes a talented team of beat makers and producers to make the final product, and for this one they had production by Juju, Rockwilder, Nobody, Nomad, Domingo, Young Lord, L.E.S., The Infinite Architects, Dead Prez, RZA, and Showbiz, amongst others. Thank you for watching my 47th video. Next time, we're going to go back over to the South to do an album that might be a little controversial to have in this group. I guess we'll have to see. So check in next time to see what that is, as well as like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite moments off Pun's culture-shifting debut are. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? All right. <laughs>